Okay, let's talk about the AccuPlacer Next Generation QAS Math Placement Exam. So it's a pretty long title, but uh, this is a very um, widely used exam, this uh, AccuPlacer, and there's different types of AccuPlacer exams, but basically they're placement um, assessments that colleges and universities use to determine uh, what course you are going to place into. So obviously, if you are applying to a college, um, they have to determine, hey, what is this person's math skill? Um, what's the right class for them? Now, it is uh, always the smart thing to do to place at the highest level possible, okay, in terms of your uh, background, knowledge, and skills. So you want to take this uh, test very, very uh, seriously. And by virtue of you watching this video, um, obviously you are taking it seriously. So what I'm going to do is go over a practice prom that you should be able to handle pretty nicely if you're fully prepared for the AccuPlacer QAS. And here is our problem. We're going to get to this in just one second. But let's talk about what uh, QAS stands for. So this is quantitative reasoning, algebra, and statistics. So there's different uh, uh, AccuPlacer exams. So uh, the QAS is kind of in the middle. Just as a, this is just a little extra information. So if you're not sure what AccuPlacer uh, uh, exam that you are taking, there is an arithmetic or arithmetic. It's kind of the more basic. And this is kind of the middle of the road, and there's an AAF, Advanced Algebra and Function. So uh, these are kind of the three flavors of next generation. And uh, this next generation here uh, means what it says. There used to be uh, an older AccuPlacer kind of uh, test level, but yeah, similar, but there's obviously been some changes. So if you're not sure what AccuPlacer you're taking, you're going to be taking one of these. We're going to be talking about the QAS, but uh, quite honestly, this particular problem could be uh, obviously on the QAS or the AAF. So we're going to get to this in just one second, but first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed many, many um, outstanding math uh, courses. So you can go to my site, uh, but you probably won't be interested in other courses because you are preparing for the AccuPlacer uh, QAS. So I actually offer a uh, fantastic AccuPlacer Next Gen QAS math prep course. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I found many, many people prepare um, for the AccuPlacer, I've done pretty well with my course. So very comprehensive. Uh, go over, obviously, you know, the bulk of what you're going to be uh, likely uh, seeing uh, on this particular exam. So a lot of algebra, obviously, some statistical concepts. Quantitative reasoning is just more like critical thinking, um, you know, with data and information. So, you know, we're talking about a lot of high school level mathematics. That's really what you need to know. And, uh, Again, QAS, Quantitative Reasoning, Algebra, and Statistics. What I have here for us is a nice algebra problem. So I'd like you to kind of play around, play a, along with me. If, you, uh, you know, if you're watching this video, let's go ahead and make the most of it. Uh, see if you can just pause the video, and, and if you know what this is, try to solve it. Okay? You know, don't, obviously, I'm going to solve it here in a second, but you should give it a, a shot on your own. Now, if you get this right, that's fantastic. If you get it wrong... If uh, don't panic, okay, use this as feedback. But this is something you definitely uh, should know. Okay, so now I'm going to start talking about this. I'm going to give you a bit of a hint, and then um, I'm going to go ahead and go through the full solution. So what we're talking about here is an absolute value equation. Okay, so you need to know, um, first of all, you need to know what absolute value is. All right, that's a definite must. And then you're going to need to know how to solve absolute value equations and absolute value inequalities. Okay, these are... Uh, very, very common type of absolute value topics. Now, a lot of students confuse what you do on an equation uh, with inequalities, okay? So they kind of mix these up. So again, you got to really study for these particular exams and practice. But I'm going to go through the concept for solving an absolute value equation. Now, very briefly, let's take a look at what absolute value is. So let's say I have the absolute value of negative 3, Okay, so probably the majority of you out there would say, oh, the answer is a positive 3, and you would be correct, and, uh, you know, fantastic, all right? But, you know, what is still the definition of uh, absolute value? Well, what's the absolute value of a positive 3? 
Yeah, most of you out there would say, oh, that's positive 3 as well. So that's excellent, okay? So if you you got that down, then that's, uh, you know, shows that you're on the right track. But let's just make sure and review what the definition of absolute value is. So absolute value of both positive and negative 3 was 3. So here's 3 on the number line, and here is negative 3 on the number line. Absolute value is the distance a number is from 0 on the number line. So negative 3 happens to be 3 units away on a number line, and positive 3 is also 3 units away uh, from 0 on uh, a number line. Okay, so that's the definition of absolute value. So now let's kind of... Um, morph this into a basic absolute value equation, then I'm going to go ahead and solve this one here in a second. So what if I said the absolute value of x is equal to 3? Okay, now by the way, remember, when we take the absolute value of a negative number, it was positive, right? Well, that's because we're always going to be measuring distance um, as displacement in positive values. So you want, you, when you take the absolute value of anything, you're not going to have a negative number. So let's take a look at this basic equation. The absolute value of x is equal to 3. So you're thinking to yourself, hmm, x is some number. How do I solve this equation? Well, we just, you know, uh, figured it out, right? You're saying, well, I know what x is. I know if I take the absolute value of 3, that's going to be 3. But I also know if I take the absolute value of negative 3, it's also going to be 3. Okay, so when we solve absolute value equations, basically, what we're, uh, the in, what's inside the absolute value function we're going to set equal to this number, okay? And there's always going to be two solutions to an absolute value equation. So that's just kind of a real basic overview. Obviously, I teach this stuff to, uh, extensively in my course, this along with many, many other uh, important math topics. But let's get to the problem now. All right, so when you're solving an absolute value equation, what you have to do first is you have to ab uh, isolate, excuse me, the absolute value function, this part of the equation. So just think of this as one big kind of variable for a second. So in other words, what if I had 5x plus 4 is equal to 19, okay? So this part right here, let's just kind of consider if that was just like, well, let's just treat it as one uh, variable, okay? So what would be the steps to solve for that variable? Well, we would subtract 4 from both sides of the equation. I would get 5x is equal to a positive 15, then I would divide both sides of the equation by 5, and I get x is equal to 3. Okay, so hopefully all of you out there can do that. Basic equation. Now, if you're having trouble with this, then you definitely need to be studying, um, you know, putting a lot of time in because there's going to be a good amount of algebra indeed uh, on this QAS assessment. Remember, you're going to college, right? You're going into a program, you know, you're kind of expected to have already taken fundamental high school mathematics. So that would be... Um, you know, for the most part, a lot of algebra and geometry. Now, again, if you're coming in and you're taking the, the next-gen arithmetic, then, you know, you might start off in college with a basic math course to review some of those additional, you know, more elementary concepts. But, you know, wherever you place, as long as you have done did the best you could possibly do, that's what really matters. Okay, let's get back to this problem here. Okay, so we're going to kind of just think of this as one unit, and we're going to isolate it. In other words, we're going to kind of solve for it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides of this absolute value equation, and I get uh, 5, absolute value of 2x plus 3 is equal to 15. Now, what uh, some students do, they think they can use the distributive property. This is a big common error. That's kind of, let me show you this mistake here for a second. This is the absolute value, 5 times the, uh, the absolute value of 2x plus 3. Okay, this is an absolute value function. You cannot do this. You can't take 5 and multiply it inside uh, the absolute value function. So in other words, this is not going to be equal to 10x plus 15. A lot of students will make that mistake. Okay, you definitely don't want to do that. All right, so what we have to do is we've got to continue to isolate this absolute value function. So we have 5 times this absolute value function here equals 15. So now we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 5. And that brings us down to the absolute value of 2x plus 3 is equal to 3. Okay, excellent. All right, so now let's think back on this basic, uh, most basic absolute value equation. 
that we just saw, the absolute value of x is equal to 3. Well, I know that the absolute value, if the absolute value of anything, if it turns out to be 3, the only thing that that x could be is 3 or negative 3. Okay, so I'm like, hmm, 2x plus 3, I know what you are. You're trying to be either, let's kind of do it over here, 2x plus 3, you are either, you could see how I like to talk to my math problems, 2x plus 3, you're either 3 or 2x plus 3, you're either negative 3, okay? So uh, this expression here has to be equal to either 3 or negative 3, and remember, you're always going to have 2 solution to have two solutions to absolute value equations. So let's go ahead and now and solve these respective equations. All right, so we'll do this one here. We're going to subtract three from both sides of the equation. And I have two x is equal to zero. So x would be equal to zero. That's one solution. And now let's subtract uh, three from both sides of this equation. I get two x is equal to negative six. Divide both sides of the equation by two. I get x is equal to negative 3. Okay, and those are my two solutions. Now, if you were able to do this problem uh, on your own, okay, with no help, then, you know, that's that's fantastic, all right? That shows that you have some uh, pretty decent algebra skills. Now, again, this is only one topic. There's a lot of other topics that you're going to see on the AccuPlace or QAS. So, but in terms of absolute value equations, not too bad, okay? So uh, kudos to you. But, um, you know, a lot of students, again, will uh, think about these steps, and then we'll, let's, let's change this problem to an inequality. Then they do these steps for an inequality problem, and that is completely wrong, okay? So, you know, that's the one thing about studying for... Uh, these tests are so much math information that you'd want to practice. You don't want to kind of, you know, do this thing, you know, confuse this uh, procedure with this procedure. And, you know, that's why it's never a good idea to rush this, uh, rush the preparation for any kind of assessment. All right. Now, of course, if we don't have that much time. Well, you do the best you possibly can do. But if you're watching this and you know that you have to take this test, you know, the further out you have the more time, let's just say, you have to study the better you're going to do. And that it really is going to have a big impact on your college placement because uh, you don't want to um, take math courses that you don't need to take, right? That's a waste of time and money, all right? These are two greatest resources. You know, you don't want to do that. So you want to take this seriously and really throw yourself into some sort of great study program. And luckily, I have a fantastic AccuPlacer Next Gen Math Prep course for the QAS um, AccuPlacer. You can find a link again to that course in the description of this video. But, um, you know, if this video helped you out, if you like my teaching style, please consider uh, smashing that like button. And also, please consider subscribing. I already have tons of materials uh, on my YouTube channel that can definitely help you out. But if you want uh, my best AccuPlacer help, you definitely want to check out my um, course. So let me some feedback. Um, are you taking a QES? Are you not sure um, which uh, AccuPlacer you're, you're taking? You know, uh, any feedback is good feedback. You definitely want to be speaking to your your college or university. Try to narrow it down. Try to get you know as much information as you can in advance. Now the AccuPlacer is one type of math placement test. There's other ones out there. Depends on what state you're in. There's another big one called the Alex exam that's used as an assessment. So, um, you know, if they switch, if your college switches you uh, to another assessment, just remember uh, what they're trying to do is really gauge, you know, what's the uh, most advanced math course you could take. Okay, so, um, you know, treat this uh, test seriously. And again, by virtue of you watching this video, you definitely are. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best uh, on this particular AccuPlacer and all other math journeys that you'll be facing in your future. And uh, thank you for your time and have a great day.